Welcome to the Ultimate Gaming Realm, and this is your creator, Dixon, logging on. Okay, Dreckheads, it's time to get caught up in the universe of Shadowrun. Remember my last Shadowrun game review I mainly did on the inferior 2007 game for the Xbox 360 and Windows Vista three years ago as my old character, the Ultramaniac Gamer? And to be honest with you, I was a little too harsh on my take of the Shadowrun 2007 game. Because when I was reviewing the game, I pretended it was 2007 when I did this review. And I also made it clear in my revisiting review that it was still a decent game. I was just pissed off at the time, due to having less to do with Shadowrun and very little to offer for what the game's worth. And Shadowrun 2007 is still the least likable game in the Shadowrun series. A few months since Shadowrun Memories and Updates video that I did, not too long after the Shadowrun 2007 review. I did also mention at the end of my Memories and Update video about an upcoming Kickstarter project from Harebrained Schemes, Shadowrun Returns. And since the last three years after a successful campaign, they came out with two other Shadowrun games, Dragonfall and Hong Kong. And plus there were different series from Cliffhanger Productions the Shadowrun Chronicles, which was originally going to be Shadowrun Online, but they changed it to Chronicles. So there's been a few Shadowrun games that came out within the last three years, since the successful campaign of Shadowrun Returns. And right now, I'm overdue on Shadowrun Returns. So let's put our chipsets back into the cyberpunk fantasy world where humans, elves, dwarves, orcs, or trolls combine together no matter if they're friends or foes, but all of us must join forces and take a look at Shadowrun Returns. As I already mentioned, Shadowrun Returns was a successful Kickstarter project by the developer and publisher Hairbrain Schemes. The game was designed by the founder of Hairbrain Schemes and also the founder of the FASA Corporation, Jordan Wiseman. With the help of another designer of Shadowrun Returns, Mitch Geidelman. And Shadowrun Returns was released in July of 2013 for the PC and Mac, and a few months later for the Android, iOS, and Linux. And with the subtitle of being at the end of Shadowrun, the subtitle of Returns is well worthy of that title. Especially after 19 years, since the last Shadowrun video game. Shadowrun Returns had two different editions. The Standard Edition and the Deluxe Edition. I pre-ordered the Deluxe Edition because I want the whole Shadowrun Returns experience. The Deluxe Edition came with a digital copy of the Shadowrun Returns game, a digital soundtrack of Shadowrun Returns, and a Shadowrun Returns Anthology PDF book. What the Deluxe Edition has to offer is a kick-ass bonus. The Anthology PDF has a lot of details about the story and the backstory of the main default story in Shadowrun Returns game. So the Deluxe Edition for a hardcore Shadowrunner like myself is well worth it. Even if you get the regular edition, you can still get the Deluxe Edition upgrade separately. It's pretty nice to have an alternative option, but I recommend the whole pack. Let's all join forces and run into the shadows of the game itself. Man meets magic and machine. The year is 2054. Magic has returned to the world, awakening powerful creatures of myth and legend. Technology merges with flesh and consciousness. Elves, trolls, orcs, and dwarves walk among us while ruthless corporations bleed the world dry. 
Shadowrun Returns is a point-and-click adventure in a tactical turn-based combat isometric RPG. Kinda like the first two Fallout games. The graphics and art designs in Shadowrun Returns are well detailed and very colorful. The character customizing in Shadowrun Returns has many options all around. Plus a specific portrait pic for your character. Which all pics look pretty rad and all, but I use a custom portrait pic for my own character. Depending on what type of character I'm creating, of course. And depending on how you create your character and what choices you make in the game can alter the upcoming events in the story. And you can earn karma points for your character upgrades as you advance. Now the character looks. Well, it is what it is. And it's not one of those big studio games like Elder Scrolls or Mass Effect. So for a comeback from a studio that just opened like Harebrain Schemes, what more can you ask for? They put in more effort into this project as it is. And I'm extremely satisfied by that. Especially using the Unity engine. The gameplay is pretty much like any other point-click and turn-based combat RPG. It's enjoyable, especially if you're a decker hacking a system to investigate something, or to steal something, or to sabotage something, or to meet someone, or to kill someone inside that system. Yeah, something like that. In Shadowrun Returns, depending on what difficulty setting you have it set on, it can be in between easy and hard, depending on how you do things, I guess. But at first, when Shadowrun Returns came out, you can't save anywhere. Which means, if you screw up, then you have to start over at the beginning of that stage. I too remember that, and it was a pain. But nowadays, they seem to fix that issue, so you can save anywhere whenever you want to. So that's freaking awesome. Now, I would have to say, Shadowrun Returns is not what you call an open world RPG. It's more likely a linear level to level type of RPG game. Because once you complete your objectives or when you're out on a mission, you're taken to that destination right away. Well, mainly the main story of Shadowrun Returns is pretty much a linear type. But depending on what type of story you create with the Shadowrun editor, it can feel more like an open world. Speaking of the Shadowrun editor and creative stories, that's another badass thing about Shadowrun Returns, is that you can create your own story with the Shadowrun editor, and add mods. And you can play user content through the Steam Workshop, give Shadowrun Returns plenty more stories and lots of other things. And some stories turn out to be good and extra fun. But there are a few user content stories that felt like they're buggy and unfinished, but some of those user content got fixes for them. But right now, let's focus on the main story of Shadowrun Returns. The story from Harebrained Schemes, of course. And boy, Wiseman and Gottman put a lot of creativity into the game. 
with a well-written story that involves the setting in the near future of Seattle. With a dark sci-fi fantasy world with mixed action, adventure, film noir, a clever murder mystery, and they all blend in with tons of surprises. Now that's what I call a wonderful combination of a story from Hairbrain Schemes and the main attraction of Shadowrun Returns, titled Dead Man Switch. The title itself is very clever. The Dead Man Switch story is set in Seattle of the year 2054. The interesting thing about the story is you're like a detective character. Well, you're not exactly a detective. You're just doing detective work for somebody. And your client is a friend who also happens to be a dead man. That's right, you're working for a dead man by the name of Sam Watts. He has this chip inside of his head called the Dead Man Switch. And it triggered off when somebody geeked him. In other words, somebody killed him. And I have two questions to ask myself. Should I accept this case? And why should I accept this case? Well, let me put it to you in another way about Sam Watts. He was a drunk, a drifter, and an asshole. Sam was a misunderstood human being and a pain in the ass. But Sam was a friend. And Sam had other friends at Seamstress's Union Club. Well, according to the owner and the regulars, Sam could be a pain in their asses too. I yet haven't answered my two questions. I'll answer the second one first. Why should I accept? Well, I actually have a few answers for that question. Sam was my friend, and three years earlier, Sam had my back during a run. And right now, I'm flat-ass broke, and I'm way behind my rent. And he had 100,000 New Yens, which is the currency of US dollars. But in the Shadowrun universe, they call it New Yens. And Sam promised me that amount of money for me in the connection with his lawyer after I saw the case. So that pretty much answers the question on why I should accept the case. Because he was a friend. I owe him for back me up and save my ass. There's a lot of money in it for me. And most importantly, justice for Sam. And besides, I'm unemployed. So I can use a job, or something more real to do. And not to forget to mention, do a favor for a friend in return. And along the way during your investigation, you will run into other jobs and find alternative ways for some fast new yen. Which is a smart idea because you can use all the upgrades for the main story amongst other things that come your way. And in the Shadowrun universe, you never know what's going to come your way. I'm also going to give you a hint. You will run into a familiar face. If you play the Super Nintendo version of Shadowrun, then you will recognize him. I'm not going to give anything else away, but I'll tell you one thing. The case is not as simple as expected. You will run into a lot more that's connected to the death of your friend and victim, Sam Watts. But I would recommend you to play Shadowrun Returns for yourself to find out, if you haven't yet. When it comes to allies and higher mercenaries, it's pretty much like the classic Shadowrun games where you can hire a crew up to three runners for a mission. And there's missions like at the beginning of the game that already have crew members automatically added. And you will run into other mercenaries on some different missions, and they will come in handy as allies. Shadowrun Returns has no voice acting. Which is fine. Because reading the dialogue between the characters, or notes, feels more like a classic RPG game. And come to think of it, that's pretty much what tabletop pen and paper RPG is all about. Reading, writing, and etc. These days I would prefer voice acting in RPG games. 
mainly the good voice acting or the bad voice acting that's good. But I most certainly wouldn't mind reading in between the dialogue, especially when it comes to a good narrative story. And if you're more familiar with these type of RPGs, and you read in between the dialogues and put your mind to use, you will be satisfied with twisted sinister plots. Which, you're going to have to play the game yourself in order to find out. The main story, Dead Man's Switch, is approximately 12 hours long, or perhaps longer, depending on how much you read the dialogue into the game. Which, to me, is definitely worth putting my time into, because I have plenty of fun reading the dialogue and advancing to see what happens next. Now the soundtrack for Shadowrun Returns is fantastic, but still not as bloody awesome as the 16-bit games, but it's still pretty badass, and it's close to the 16-bit games as you can get. Like I said earlier, I know I'm three years overdue and I'm finally catching up. And all I can say to Shadow Runners, Dreckheads, Slogfaces, Halloweeners, BTL Addicts, Chipheads, and etc. Shadowrun Returns may not be as memorable as the 16-bit games. And by all means, Shadowrun Returns is not a perfect game, but Hairbrain Schemes put a lot of effort and a lot of heart of the Shadowrun universe into the game. And Shadowrun Returns really does feel like a true comeback into the world of video games. And Shadowrun Returns is definitely a bloody awesome game, and to me, it's extremely recommendable. Especially if you're a die-hard Shadowrun fan, and if you're into the dark sci-fi cyberpunk adventure type like me, then it's really up your alley. And above all, the only way I recommend Shadowrun Returns is getting the Deluxe Edition from either Steam or GoodOldGames.com, which was released on GoodOldGames.com a few months later. I know the GOG versions are DRM-free, but I don't know if you can have access to a uh, user content like the Steam version. And I haven't tried the GOG version, so I wouldn't know for sure yet. So my better recommended would probably be the Steam version. You can also get them on mobile devices like Androids or iPads. But for more Shadowrun experience, including the user content, I would recommend the PC version of Shadowrun Returns. The Deluxe Edition. Mainly the Steam version. That's pretty much all I gotta say. Eventually I'll get into the other two Shadowrun games, Dragonfall and Hong Kong. But in the meantime, thank you all very much for listening and watching, and have a good one. Dixon of the Ultimate Gaming Realm, logging off.